Two Sigma essentially is a technology company that applies insights from big data in a scientific fashion to a broad range of investment businesses. And so we began almost 20 years ago with our hedge fund products, and we now apply those insights to asset management, market making, venture investing, and most recently, the insurance business. So there's a lot going on at Two Sigma, and we're hiring, uh, in case anyone here is looking. Um, and uh, what do I do at Two Sigma? I am the chief innovation officer, and amongst other things, my role is innovating and driving the core platform that our modelers use to initiate, create, test, and then publish their ideas to the system. Excellent, thank you. So maybe could you dive a little bit deeper into how modeling or machine learning, in particular or modeling more generally, affects some of these different lines of business you have at Two Sigma? Sure, well, really, models are Two Sigma's business. Everything that we do is a model. That's really all there is. So when I'm uh, you know, in my kind of day-to-day -day work, I tend to reflect on Box's uh, famous quote, all models are wrong, some models are useful, right? So that's frequently on my mind. We, we really think deeply about it. Models are really core to our ability to navigate through everything that we do. And at Two Sigma, we believe that models are useful primarily for three reasons. Firstly, if you have a model of something, whether it's uh, trading uh, in the stock market or you know, how you hire individuals or how you tune your JVM, they provide everyone talking about that model with a common frame of reference and within that frame, a common language. So when we are, that means that when we're observing what's expected by the model, our conversations can be shorter, they can be richer and more meaningful. And secondly, they allow us to test our hypotheses, right? So that's what a model is. And by paying careful attention to that gray zone where what the model does falls short of what we expect it to do, we understand more about the model that we're trying to build. And thirdly, of course, they provide us with a platform where we can methodically increase our understanding of the problem that we're trying to solve, and that's what we're trying to do all the time. That's excellent. And so you talked a, a bit about complexity there, how these are getting more sophisticated over time. Uh, you mentioned briefly the, the sheer number of parameters that tend to creep into these models as they get bigger and, and better and better. Um, so how important is it to make sure that those configurations are correct in terms of amplifying that impact? Yeah, so I think the short answer is it's very important. It's really the difference between P and L, right? <laughs> uh, a model is only really as good as the parameters that are tuned by it. Now, the truth is that without, without the uh, model, there's no need for parameter tuning. So it's a kind of a, a yin-yang, a kind of you know, push-me-pull-you type effect. Um, but really, the people that we hire model. And they have an idea, a hypothesis they want to test. And we want to try and find the parameters that really allow that hypothesis to bear itself out in the market or for whatever system we're doing. And so it's really, really critical that we find good ways to tune our hyperparameters on the one hand. On the other hand, I don't really want my modelers spending a week and a half running grid simulations to figure out what the best parameters are. So it's really a, a catch-22 there. That's excellent. So once you adopted kind of a more scalable, standardized approach and took this arduous task off your plate, how has that affected just development in general at Two Sigma? Yeah, so as I said earlier, really, it's all about what we call conversational research. And you know, many people think that when we talk about conversational research, it's about speed. Um, and you know, to a certain extent, that's true. Uh, I love listening, listening to podcasts. At 1.0, it's a pain to All right, this one works. Oh, I sound better on this microphone than that one. Uh, uh, you know, 1.0, a, a podcast is kind of boring. At 5.0, it's not understandable. So there's this kind of happy medium where you can increase the speed to the point where you're getting good information. And that's really what conversational research is about. It's about driving the richness of, uh, of conversation. So if we can offload some of the kind of cognitive load that our modelers have when they're thinking about the whole um, life cycle of a model that includes tuning and refitting and things like that, and let them instead focus on the core real va economic value of the model, then that's going to kind of raise productivity and eventually drive more models to production.
And then has there any been kind of any opportunities for the larger business? I know you mentioned before back in 2003, grid search or kind of parameter sweeps could make sense. And obviously, if you're tuning a random forest and there's maybe only two parameters, that can make sense. But has this been able to unlock any new opportunities? Because obviously, two-dimensional optimization in your head is hard enough. 15-dimensional optimization in your head is impossible. I would posit that n not even anyone in this intelligent audience here would be able to do that very effectively. So um, has it allowed you to maybe tackle broader problems or different problems than you had historically? Uh, yeah, there's, I think there's, there's no question. I, I, I think this is, this is key to being a platform company is that as you build parts of the platform, you allow yourself to kind of solve problems that you couldn't even envision with the, with the kind of the platform that you had five years ago. And that's exactly the same with all these algorithms, especially now in the age of AI, you know, the number of tunable parameters really goes through the roof. Uh, you know, it may be one for linear regression, and if you're doing neural networks, it's a lot, lot, lot more. And, you know, really getting a hand on understanding how to tune those uh, uh, parameters is absolutely key. Um, because really, I, I, you know, I think that especially in our business, um, those parameters are, you know, somewhat directly correlated with the risk that you're going to take on any one of these models. And really, in this game, it's just about understanding your risk. So the better you can kind of rely on those algorithms to tune effectively, um, the better handle you're going to have on your risk. Uh, That's good. excellent. And that ties back to your point earlier about kind of augmenting what humans are good at and uh, uh, automating certain aspects of the stack, um, like maybe parameter tuning, but really allowing a human to uh, do whatever it is that they do best, whether that's uh, forecasting or whether that's uh, cat burglaring. And that's really what SIGOPT uh, is all about, is really augmenting your AI stacks. Um, we bolt on top of any infrastructure, model, or data pipeline. Um, we're not trying to automate everything away. What we're trying to do is take what you do best and accelerate your ability to iterate on it and amplify the results that come out of it.